I don't know about you guys, but the quarantine was not ideal for my eating and my physique when we first got locked down. I took it as a way to pity myself, feel bad. You know, obviously the whole world is going through this, but I took it as, hey, no, it's only me. We're all going to die. So I might as well eat cookies, Chipotle, and pizza. And then you realize, okay, we're going to make it through this. It's going to take some time, but we're going to make it through. Let me not eat like an asshole forever. And luckily, I'm married to someone who constantly reminds me that I'm eating like an asshole, won't have sex with me if I don't look my very best. That's something I need a therapist about, but also runs a pretty phenomenal nutrition company with Own Your Eating. And she's put together, that is Roz, my wife, some great challenges that you guys can check out. If you're like me, like you said, and you need a little extra accountability, you need a kick in the ass, you wanna just learn a little more, you wanna do something really cool at your box, at your gym, at your affiliate, you should check these out. So if you go over to Sugarwad in the marketplace, we've got the Own Your Eating store in there, and there's three different challenges you can check out. If you're a box owner, I highly recommend you check out the Gym Nutrition Challenge. I think it's only like $169, something like that. And the cool thing about it is if you're a box owner, you can give this to your members as a way to just, hey, I'm giving you a bonus. I'm giving you something. You know, we appreciate that you stuck with us during your during the quarantine. We appreciate that you kept your membership active. Or you can even make money. She's had a few gyms that have done really well at $169. You get 20 people signed up at 20 bucks, you've, you've made over $200. So check out the 30-day transformation challenge for gyms. That's a specific one for box owners. And then we've got ones for individuals, the 30-day transformation challenge, as well as the 30-day get lean challenge. And, and with both of those, you're going to get programming, you're going to get daily information, daily accountability, and so much more. The transformation challenge is really for those that are either new to tracking macros and flexible eating, or maybe you've done it in the past and you want to get dialed back in like I needed. And of course, accountability goes a long way. It's something I preach as far as a coach. I have coaches for many aspects of my life. And the primary reason is I just need that account accountability. Hey, did you do what I told you to do? Hey, don't forget you said you do this, right? It's just a reminder in the back of my head when I'm about to mess up, that I got someone out there that's relying on me doing well and gonna remind me about it. And then there's the 30 day get lean. This is more for the experienced people. Maybe you've tracked macros in the past, you have a good understanding of nutrition, but you're ready to take it to the next level. Maybe you've plateaued, you're ready for reverse dieting, or you just need some extra coaching out there. So you can check these all out on Sugarwad. The link is in the show notes, but if you go to Sugarwad, you go to the marketplace, you look up on your eating, you're going to see these options. And the cool thing is you can use the code best hour. You can use the code best hour and you'll get 10% off any of the options there. So B E S T H O U R the code best hour will get you 10% off in the sugar wad marketplace. Check it out on your eating Roz's three challenges. And she's seen tremendous results. And trust me, if you're working with Roz, I'm going to hear about it. She'll ask me for some feedback as well. So you really get two coaches for the price of one. Check it out. Use the code best hour for 10% off. Look at what? All right. All right. No, I hit record already, Todd. We're going to get ready to record this episode. But if you go to CrossFit.com right now, go there. Go Todd to CrossFit.com. Oh, yeah. Look at oh, Todd. Yeah, of course. Look at, of come course. on, bro. Of come course. On, <laughs> well, welcome they to the needed party some, here, buddy. You know, clearly under Eric Rose's reign, the dot com, the site is not getting the traffic it used to. And he said, let's bring no, out the big guns. Made, yeah, that's a strategic uh, initiative right there. Get me on make me FaceTime. That's twice this week, bro. Come on now. They, they did some research like, all right, let's go back. When have we had the most hits on dot com? You know, this dude Todd is talking about, is this a video? Yeah. Yeah. It's an that's an old video, right? It was from 2016. I was, I was gonna say like I've, at, I've seen uh, this before. That's from Miami, no? Isn't it? That's at no, nah, it's Atlanta. That's Atlanta. Uh, is it? Yeah, yeah downtown Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Look at you, Todd. Wow. Jay, you 80. should go back and watch this. Uh, you should go back and watch this video and take notes on how to hit a timeline in a lecture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Katie Powell looking solid in that push press position, though. Give her credit right there. Knees right. out, weight yeah, and heels. If you go back to Sunday there, Todd's, you know, uh, demonstrating doing... frontal plane using a PVC pipe and uh, doing a very good job. Hey, if I was going to give you some uh, critical feedback here, Todd, this is a very good um, – demonstration of how to effectively use your demo while using visual aids so well thank done, you sir. thank you remember thank you. a couple of years ago at the summit somebody did a lecture with pvc pipes and then all of a sudden every time we did a lecture we'd show up with like three different pvc pipes to show <laughs> angles and everything no no that was you everybody else <laughs> yeah, got yeah. the message yeah <laughs> no um, idea you just went a box like pointing when a well, box had like a black pvc and a white one i can like be like well look at this one like look at the angles here now Contrary or opposite of this great CrossFit.com site, there's this other site called DriveFitness.com. That's and where this, you want to live for, for programming. I think it sure. basically just gave my Mac a virus going to this site. Speaking of websites, there, you might be in trouble. speaking of websites, I just got mine redone. It'll probably be live this afternoon, and then we're going to bring on the folks that did it. And I okay. think you guys will be impressed. All right, I'm excited. For I was it. looking through it today. I was looking through it today. And I was like, "This is dope!" Like, I really, really like this. Do websites matter anymore in CrossFit? Yes. Yeah, and there's and there's some, and that's why I'm going to bring Andy on the podcast and talk to him about it. So, the, and there's um, there's a lot of different factors into it as far as like now there are some things that uh, are so like blogs are not what they used to be, and they don't work the way they used to. So that is. A, a correction people need to make. In 2008, 2009, I had that TypePad account and you couldn't do what you could do today. And I had to like learn HTML coding and like I would spend hours trying to perfect this website. It was crazy. But anyway, looking, God, at, I am look, look, looking at you right now, your hair is sticking out like you're stressed out from trying to code your computer, trying to upload <laughs> <Yeah>. one blog <laughs> post. Like, it looks like you've been up for nine hours and you're stressed out. Trying to get and all, your and all, and on all he was, all he was website. doing, all he was doing is logging into Zoom. <laughs> I, I forgot to brush my hair this morning. Oh, no, but man. Todd, your website. So the reason I went to .com, the reason I went to Drive is because today we're going to discuss time domains and we were going to pull up a few different workouts. But, but if I go to your site, Todd, and I go to blog and workouts, it's not letting me actually do anything. So you there's there's not post on your website anymore. There's a, there's a pop broken. up that comes up when you when you click the uh, workout. Let's see. It should pop up. It just keeps taking me back to the same home page. Your site's broken. That might be you, buddy. User anyway. error, operator error. So check that out. We'll use some dot com workouts, but we got a request to discuss time domains specifically. You know, how do we come up with time domains? Whether it's a uh, a, a um, AMRAP or whether it's for time, like talking about that. And we've discussed it a little bit in the whiteboard. Do you instance. struggle? Do you struggle with am, uh, time domains for AMRAPs? <laughs> I got, did you notice how I just completely. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I there? definitely noticed, which is why it's always alarming that I do anything uh, partnering with you. Um, so anyway, we, we've discussed it a handful of times because it's important that you know this stuff going into the whiteboard brief, but now let's kind of take a further step backwards and figure out, okay, before the whiteboard brief, when you're looking at a workout, how do we do it? For a lot of people, if you're following other programming, it's pr pretty much done for you. But this is something you should know. It's like anything, like just because it's done for you doesn't mean you shouldn't have an idea. And you also shouldn't always trust the company that you're using to do it perfectly. So Yeah, I think, I think you have to factor in some things is you know depending where you got it from it, you know, it might not match the demographic of your gym you know if you have newer athletes or older athletes something like that that time domain probably wouldn't hold the way it's written so you have to be able to look at it and, and maybe retool it a little bit and, and i think it's important to know you know with the task priority workout we can look at it and we do figure out kind of hey this is the time i want people to take but with the time priority workout it's still very important to understand how many rounds we expect you know we talk about it at the level one and someone at the level two, like don't just throw AMRAP on there 10 because you don't know how to figure out how to set it so everybody finishes in 10 minutes. Yeah, or just put a time cap on there, right? That's the other thing we still get that question is like, well, how, how about we just put a time cap on so we know when everybody has to be done by? Do not yeah, do that. Like, 
Yeah, exactly. If you do that, immediately write yourself a harshly written letter, mail it to yourself so you get it the following day, and just says you're I'm a turd on it. That's all you should do. <laughs> so, do you guys? Let's let's talk about that for a moment. I mean, I think I don't think it's always wrong to use a time cap, but I think if that's you, if you rely on that to make sure everybody finishes at a certain time, then it's wrong. When do you guys still to this day use a time cap, if ever? Never. Never. Like, yeah, I, I can't tell you the last time we used a time cap at my gym, to be honest with you. I know at some point we have, but I can't remember the last time. I might do it. You know, there, there, are, there are workouts that although we know the intended stimulus, you know, take Fran, for example, I might say, hey, there's a 10-minute cap because a handful of you are ready to test the waters with RX. But you're done at 10 minutes. Are they? Yeah, but well, and here's here's the other thing yeah, is if you're good get, question, friend. Good question. Well, if they're not done in ten minutes, I, I think that's a good point. Is like you're probably not ready to test it, or yeah, to to test the waters of it. But the other flip side of that is like if I'm giving somebody the green light and being like, listen, I know the intended stimulus today is supposed to be you know five to eight minutes, something like that, but I'm going to let you do it RX and just see how it goes. How dare you cut them off at 10 minutes when they're in their yeah. round of nine? They have seven pull-ups left to do, and you're like, ah, time. Nope. And yeah. now they've never completed our exercise. Yeah, so you're, like, yeah. Even, in, even in that scenario where I'm going to let somebody go, and I know they're over the intended stimulus, and I'm going to let them struggle a little bit, I'm still going to allow them to finish because, you know, that's kind of what we're going for if that's the decision for that day and that workout, right? Yeah, I would say if you're doing a time cap, it's more so – to protect the integrity of the class, meaning class ends on time. And, and, and really when, I'm, when I look at something like that and I've got a, a workout that would probably need to be time capped, I just flip it and make it a, a, a time party workout anyways. That's the day I turn it into an AMRAP. All right, this thing's gonna take most people 25 to 30 minutes. I don't want anybody going much longer than 30, so let me just turn this into an AMRAP. So that person that gets done a little bit earlier can do a little more work and the other people kind of have their time, time, their time cap baked into it. You know, and I, I'm sure both of you guys would agree. That's last, last, last resort. And even last resort after that there, there's multiple things that have gone wrong at that point. If you've decided I need a time cap, like you, either the programming is just kind of ridiculous. It's a 25 minute AMRAP with, 10 movements in it that can't be covered in a reasonable time frame, or the general warm up was a mess or your whiteboard brief was eight minute long or, or like something like that. Like you need to, you need to kind of like reverse engineer that and figure out like, why is that not, I mean, 35 minutes, you know, let's just call it seven minutes, cool down plus a 25 minute AMRAP. That's 32 minutes. It gives me 28 minutes to get all the stuff done. Like what are we doing with our time? You know? Yeah. And I mean, it goes back to that whiteboard brief as well. Like you, you probably botched to the whiteboard brief as a whole, but you also probably did a bad job explaining the stimulus or you came into the class unprepared. So mm -hmm. let's, let's take maybe the three most recent workouts on CrossFit.com and kind of maybe talk about, Hey, if we, we don't have to go over the whiteboard brief, but let's take the, well, the first one's a NAM wrap. So let's, let's, let's take this one. And, yeah, but still, you, you can do the yeah. same way, right? It's, they're both the same process. Yeah, so let's, let's do the following. Let's take 10, 15 seconds. Let's each in our own mind come up with how many rounds you think you would tell your class to do, and then let's talk about it and see how close we are to one another. Cool? So I'll read it. You guys start thinking, complete as many rounds as possible in seven minutes. This is the workout of the day for July 28th, 2020, of 20 dumbbell push presses, men prescribed weight is 50 women prescribed weight is 35 and then 40 double unders so in seven minutes 20 push press with the dumbbell 40 double unders let's see i would say i'm doing the math tell me I'll, when you're ready you, you have a number i think so, your your four four rounds give or take is what yeah. you what you're you're looking for there so so walk people how you got there so obviously you've got to think about this being the, either the best athlete in your gym or like an above average athlete. So I, I look at this and I'm like, right, 20 dumbbell push press, even at 50 pounds is something that your best athletes doing in no more than two sets. 
right? Yeah. And that's- Wouldn't you say, in your whiteboard brief, would you position that as, you should be able to go unbroken if you needed to? For one, even, even a top athlete, if you're doing five rounds of this, I think you're gonna break it up. So it should be something that I think two really? sets per round. You don't, you don't think so? No. Todd, you have to understand, you, Todd, so, Todd's coming back from COVID. He's a little deconditioned. Well, well, let's – so do the math on that if you – if someone is able to do this unbroken. So if you go 20 of those unbroken, that ends up being 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yeah. And then you do your 40 30 double seconds. Unders. Yeah, 20 to 30, 30 seconds. We'll just call it, call it a, so minute, a minute, roughly. A minute around, right? So you're telling me that five rounds into that, they're still going unbroken? No, doubtful. At that heart rate? Doubtful. doubtful. So Games I, so athletes, I think, yes. You're out, your best member at the box, probably not. Right. So that's what I take into account is the fact that like, all right, if somebody is doing it all unbroken, then you're looking at seven rounds of this workout. And at that point there, it's going to be hard not to be busted. I don't think it's seven, but I don't think it's four. I think this is a, I think it's a four to six. Yeah. Like that's four. my range, right? Yeah. 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 Four plus is because what I, I got, do right? think, cause I do think, cause I don't think five unbroken is reasonable is, uh, excuse me, is unreasonable. And I'm probably just going to take a little bit longer breaks rather than break it in two. So that's where I'm going to lose a minute in, in transition. And what, and, and, and as, as that shakes out, it ends up time wise being roughly the same. You want to take 20 seconds before you pick them back up so you can go unbroken or you want to pick them right back up, do 10, set them down, pick them up, do 10. So in my opinion, it ends up being roughly the same. Well, and you have to look uh, at the movements, yeah, yeah. right? Like it's not necessarily movement redundancy, but the, the shoulder, double shoulder unders, yeah. yeah, the double unders are not helping your push press. You're going to, you know, something you'd want to preach at that whiteboard is you need to drive through those heels, squeeze your butt hard on those push press because your shoulders are about to get smoked on the double unders. I think that'd be a great workout to test like a games athlete to see if they can imam that. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even think it's unreasonable for a really fit in a, in a, in a gym. It wouldn't take it have to go to more than like two or three gyms to find somebody who's going to do seven rounds of that i think a game so, athlete is going to move significantly faster here's why so games athlete is going to do that unbroken 40 double unders is going to take 20 seconds so they're going to going to be able to keep roughly a minute pace because they're not going to slow down because 50 dumbbell 50 pound dumbbells for 20 push press is not like if you're doing it correctly and using your legs the way you should for a push press i'm telling you right now like i i've like am not fit these days and I'm for sure going to do four rounds of that unbroken. Like Ooh, taking, Todd, you, taking, you think you do taking that? my time, taking my time. I'm going to do four rounds of that unbroken. And you're going to probably finish just four plus, right? Uh, no, I'm pretty confident. I, uh, five and a half of that. Like, man, I think that's a workout that you should do today and report back to us. I, yeah. I will. I will. Right. Um, Done. I, I like, so I'll, I'll tell you the way that I come up with my numbers. Like I look at that and I'm like, all right, those are going to be heavy, especially because I'm not considering a games athlete. I'm considering the best athlete in my gym. And yep, I got some people that could probably do it unbroken, but probably not throughout without taking big rests at yeah. some point. If they're so going to go like, unbroken, they're going to rest 30 seconds after each round. Or whatever it is. And so, so I look at 20 fairly heavy because they're a dumbbell because that's going to change the game too compared to 100 pounds or even 135 on a barbell and so I'm like all right that's probably going to be two sets which will end up being about 45 seconds to transition to the double unders like you said that's about 30 seconds and transition back so I'm like that's a 90 second per round over the course of the workout easily someone's going to be around four rounds which is what I want most of my athletes to get and I know that my top people are going to be like Fern said five and a half and, but, but my bottom people at a minimum should be four because even if I, you know, if I scale them appropriately, there shouldn't be many people that don't get to four rounds. So that's, oh, that's I, that, where I'm that at. I, that I agree with. Any less than four, we've made a mistake. So four is the minimum I'm going to give you. But I'll go, like if I was going to brief that, I would probably throw a challenge on there. Be like, listen, you should really shoot for seven here. Like you should try to break yourself off in a seven minute AMRAP. So with that being said, and, and that's, you know, the nice thing about this, you can, you have this great buffer of, Hey, four to seven rounds, which yep. makes everybody feel good. But what are some of the things you'd look at in these two movements? If you were doing a whiteboard brief to help them understand that, to help them make sure they scaled appropriately, let's assume they well, have double unders. 
Well, number one, it's not their job to scale appropriately. It's our job to scale them appropriately. And so what I'm going to say is, hey, we're looking for a challenging weight, but something that you can do at least in two sets throughout the entire workout. And then your double unders should be, you know, 30 to 45 seconds worth of double unders or single unders attempts. That's the way I'd break it at my gym. Yeah, I, I would, I'd probably be a little bit more uh, aggressive. I, w- I would probably say because of the duration of this workout, seven minutes, that's a, that's, that is all cardiorespiratory endurance. You shouldn't be choosing a dumbbell that's going to slow you down because in seven minutes, that's going to eat up a lot of your work time. So if you take two 20 second breaks, I mean, you're talking about eating up a significant portion of my overall work time. So whatever the double under number that we're going to choose, we're trying to bite off on something that's going to be unbroken and the dumb go unbroken too. And I'm like, four is the minimum, but I want everybody to try to push towards five or six on this one. So the dumbbells that you choose or that we choose should match that. And, and we, I, would, I would do some tests in the, in the warm up with the double under number to figure out what everybody should be having. And if somebody doesn't have dumbbell unders, this may be a good time to say, hey, whether it's you're going to look at the clock and you're going to do singles for 40 seconds or even a minute or jump up and down on a plate. I think those are scaling options people often overlook. They're just like double or same number, but, you know, give them a time domain that, that you think they should be within. Any, uh, any last statements on July 28th at CrossFit.com? Nope, I think that's good. So, Todd, if you look at July 27th, boy, what does that remind you of? What is that, that one? Oh, you're not on it? It's um, no. 21 back squats, 42 GHD sit-ups, 15 back squats, 30 GHD sit-ups, <laughs> nine, <laughs> nine back yeah. squats, 18 GHD sit-ups, 225 for the men, 155 for the ladies. Oh, 220, so it's tw- 21... 42, 15 and nine, right? yeah, twenty-one fifty-nine for the back squat, and then double for the sit-ups, GHD sit-ups, forty-two, right. thirty, eighteen. That's almost a back squat version yeah. of the infamous workout we did. Front squat, front workout. squat, the front squat yeah, workout. Way, way to GHD. It was yeah, it was way to GHD instead of double GHD, but similar. Now, of course, I would go unbroken on this, just like I would do on the front squats. That was a, everybody didn't get that. That was a joke. That was not a, yeah. yeah, that was definitely a joke. Um, so 21, 15, so 45 back squats at 225. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. 45. Um, Do it. Should we, should we like put our scores on the board here and see what our, well, what we it came depends. Up with? Are Ooh. you, are you doing a score? Yeah, so you're doing a range. I see what Todd did, and I was kind of, I just came up with a number. It was right. We'll talk it through. Todd wrote nine to twelve. What I had, what I had in my head was this should be about ten minutes or less. So you were a little more gracious in those two minutes. Firm, what did you come up with? Uh, sorry, I was texting, Got Instagramming. Um, you said nine to twelve, Todd. Todd yeah. said nine to twelve. Yeah, I mean, I would make a subtle. I, so this is just me. I would say eight to twelve, but that's because I like to like I, we just. I just really like four minute blocks. I find that four to five minute blocks of time work really well to give a good spread from fastest to slowest. Three, three, three ends up. A lot of people end up missing if I do a three minute block typically. So let's throw this question out there. Let's go to Todd. You say nine to 12. So you're saying my best can do it in nine. How do you figure out what that buffer should be? Because you can scale someone so everyone's doing it under nine. So how do you figure out, like, okay, what so, am I? So where's so, that three so the, minutes coming to play? My my process is well, a lot of it comes from feel and experience, right? But it's like I look at it similar to the way I talked through the last one. So I look at the twenty one back squats at two twenty five, and yes, you're always going to have freaks that can do something unbroken. But I'm like, even the t- I, I don't look at just the one person that can do this. I look at the top of our gym. I'm like, if someone's really doing that 225 in my gym, they're probably, if they're doing it RX, they're doing it no more than three sets. Three sets of seven could be done in 90 seconds. They get on the GHD, 42 GHD sit-ups. 
I, it's gonna, I said it's going to probably take two to two and a half because your quads are going to be pretty blown up from the squats and you're not going to go super fast. So I'm like, all right, four minutes on the first one. That means you turn around and you're a little bit beat up from the first round to where the second round is slower overall than the first one. But because it has significantly less reps, it's roughly three minutes there and then the same thing for the last one. So I'm like, all right, we're four minutes, we're three minutes, and we're two minutes for the three rounds. That's how I got to nine minutes total for the short end of things. And then I think of my less conditioned or less fit athletes. I'm going to scale them to where their breaks are the same as far as like if I expected my RX athlete to do the first one in three sets of the back squats, well, then I expect my le least conditioned athletes to do it in three sets as well. But I also know they're going to rest a little bit more in between sets. So they're not going to be the person that puts the bar down and then, you know, catches their breath, takes two breaths and then immediately like charges it to pick it up again they're going to be the ones that actually wait for their heart rate to go down and touch before they go and so it's more of like just feel and experience that that extra rest time is probably going to end up being around three minutes yeah i would agree with that i think the other thing that it, so what i think is valuable here is yes we have a lot of um uh we have a lot of experience but how would you go about Todd and Jason, how would you both figure this out if you had no experience? So let's just say you, somebody needed a, a coach with a level one, you haven't done a lot of coaching, the gym is trying to get their, their, their doors back open and they just need people to fill classes and, and you show up and they've programmed this. So forget whether we think all of that is right or wrong. How would I go about figuring this out if I don't have the enough experience or even accurate experience to, to, to sort that out? My, I would say, go ahead, Todd. Well, most of my experience and my knowledge has come from me doing this stuff, right? So if, if I'm that coach that you just described, right, and I'm brand new, or I'm the gym owner and I've got that coach, I'd be like, hey, this is the workout we're doing tomorrow. I want you to come in today with me and do this with me. And then, so two things, I'm going to see how it feels for us, right? So I'm going to see what my experience is with it. And then I've got to have true reality check on where do I fit in the spectrum of fit to un like quote unquote unfit in my gym. And if, you know, based on how it treated me, that's going to dictate, did I overdo it? Should I have scaled it down more or did I scale that correctly? If this is the right time, then do I give it to everybody else? So most of my experience in this and how I did this early on, especially as I just started programming and that opened my gym is me and my co-owner co did all the workouts before they were programmed for regular classes. Okay. And based on how well I did that. So that's, that's where I would go. I mean, okay. So separate could, question for you, Jay. So I, I like that answer. That's probably the ideal answer. So separate answer, Jay, you have to fill in for somebody tomorrow at the 6am. It's 9pm. The, the workout gets um, released. You haven't had a chance to test it out. How do you figure out what this should look like? Well, as you guys know, I don't take coaching lightly. I would wake up, I would do the workout at 10 o'clock at night. We both know that. Tell would us, never tell us the because... last time you did a CrossFit workout, Jay. That's the real yeah, question. Yeah. Before you try to tell me how that was. Uh, so here's what I, I tend to first and foremost look at the workout as if it was done unbroken. So that's what I would do first. So in my mind, okay, 21 back squats at 225, and I'm not saying you know you have to you have to be realistic to what the movement is, what the reps are, and what the load is. Yes. I've seen people go, you know, one second back squats at 225. I'm not expecting that from even my best athlete. I would say it's probably a five or six reps burst, take a deep breath, another five or six, if they're going to go unbroken. And I would put that at probably a minute and 15. You know, that's, that's a long amount of time, but I think people can do that unbroken. Same with the GHD sit-ups. And then start to factor in, like Todd said, okay, people don't think about it, but if you're, if you're doing those back squats – your GHD sit-ups are going to be impacted. So what would typically be a two-second movement might require, especially at 42 reps, in my mind, you know, I think I'd probably try to go 10 to 12 deep breath, 10 to 12 deep breath. So two-second reps, it's, it's a minute, um, it's a 90 seconds, so a little long, two minutes. So you're at a minute and 15 and two minutes there. So call it, call it 315, and then you would do the same for each one. And that's, you know, I think if we continue to do that math out, taking transition time, 
we're probably in that eight to nine minute range, like you guys suggested. And, you know, then you give that little bit of a buffer. Not every, you know, people are going to go seven, seven, seven on the back squat. People are, you know, going to fail the back squat. People are going to really rest on the GHD sit up. So, People or Jason's gonna you, I'd go Jay, you're gonna do that. You're, you're gonna you're gonna fail back squats and you're gonna rest on the GHG. Here, here is what I would do. I would um I would get my watch out, three, two, one, go, and I would mime the entire first round. So I would put something on my back and I would move at a back squat pace. This is at nine o'clock at night. If listen, if I'm not trying to fuck this up, and by the way. If in fact the round is the first round is gonna take me four minutes, it's four minutes of your time, so you could be in bed by nine oh four. Um so I would put something on my back, whatever back backpack, something like that. I would do twenty one squats. Boom. I'd I'd sit down on the floor and I'll probably do like a pike sit up to mimic some longer range of motion where I lay down on the floor and then reach forward and touch my toes. So we could assume the GHD is a little bit more range of motion than that, but you gotta deal with it, what you gotta deal with. And I would move it like a workout pace, right? So I would like a little bit slower than I'm going to be just in my own body weight. I would test that first round again, taste whatever takes me four minutes, three and a half to four minutes. That's going to give me a pretty good idea. And then I'm going to factor in if I broke this, how much wiggle room and that would that be a minute of breaks. So if I do three sets in the back squat and then I have to do three sets in the GHD, each of those is, I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds. Let's call it a minute 15. Uh, of of wiggle room to add to each round of that that comes up with my additional three to three and a half minutes of wiggle room as i go through but that's that's how i would do it i would do one full round no weight just in my kitchen or in my bedroom and just start my watch and figure out how long it took and then i'd be like all right this is roughly how long this is going to take if i'm moving at that pace well and what's kind of cool is three different methods we all came up with basically the same range of time do you think, do you think the newer coaches out there tend to err on the side of a lower time or a higher time when they're analyzing a workout? Meaning lower. they would say this is six minutes, or they would say this is twenty minutes. In my experience, they go lower. Yeah, I don't. I'll be honest with you. I, thinking back to when I started coaching, there like, I don't know that how often I looked at and was like, I wonder how long this is going to take. <laughs> like I don't know that I thought of that you know what I mean like I just like oh I want I, I wonder how this one's gonna go <laughs> you know and, and and in my head every time I looked at a workout it was like I still think go, I'll probably go unbroken and I'll probably win you know I mean? still think I still think how's this gonna go but I know what the intended <laughs> stimulus for right, the workout right is. so I'm just saying like a new coach if they looked at this I don't man but it's a different day I, I and age. Say, it's a different I, time. I, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I've given the story of I used to, you know, I'd coach the early morning classes and I was walking guinea pigs, in dude. at, at, at 5.55 <laughs> in the morning. I'd walk into the gym after opening it and I'd walk into the owner's office and pick up the workout off the desk. And that was the first time I saw it before I was going to coach it at 6. Yeah. Um, the 6 was but, over at 6.15. I changed the workout <laughs> for the 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, but – I would think uh, I think newer newer coaches look at something like this, and just from responses that we get at like level twos when we're going through programming stuff, they'd look at a workout like this, and we'd say nine to twelve minutes or eight to twelve minutes, and they'd be like, "No chance! I can't do twenty-one back squats in ninety seconds." And so all of a sudden, they start to calculate it out for them doing it as prescribed, and they're like, "No, no, this is a twenty-minute workout," because they don't connect the dots that like. You don't have to do it prescribed. And in fact, you shouldn't do it prescribed. It's what is the best person doing it. When do you think that notion of the stimulus really took off in CrossFit? I mean, back in the day, it was just, there, there, well, there were plenty of workouts that were like, pick a weight. Like Coach Glassman wouldn't even prescribe the, the weight, right? Like pick a weight that allows you to do, and, and for many of the classics, that's kind of where the 95, the 225 came from. But when do you think it became here's the workout of the day, suffer through it versus here's the workout of the day, by the way, you should be done in this time. And I feel like that's around like 2013 or so was when it started to get a little more real there. Cause I remember when I started, it was like, it was, this is the workout. There wasn't a stimulus that I was aware of. And that's who I was. Cause I was coming from a gym to where I was like, 
the back and buys where I would write out what, what I was going to do for the day and it, whatever it said on whatever I writ, wrote out was what I did. So then going to CrossFit.com and looking at it, I'd be like, all right, well, this is what it tells me I should do. So let me see what happens. I wonder how this is going to go. <laughs> it, I think it was also probably about that time too, Todd, when we saw what's capable, what the body is capable of. So that's where I was going to go with that is like, uh, I don't remember when Beyond the Whiteboards started, but probably within like 18 months of that. And there was enough data collected in there where you could look and you would get like, a, oh, okay, this is generally where people fall. You got the really fast yeah. people, you got the new people, but generally based on this huge um, aggregate data, you could look at it and say, okay, this is a eight to 12 minute workout. Got it. On the fast yeah. end, if I'm super fit, it's eight. And if I'm, you know, you know, just kind of getting started and all that, then it should be roughly 12 based on the scaling options and what everybody did. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny how that changed in time because you're right. It was like, no. People would be like, what should I scale to? Um, it says 225. That's yeah, what yeah. you should scale to. If you can't do 225, then you just are going to get three reps in. <laughs> Sorry. I, I can still, <laughs> one, of my, one of the first gyms I was at doing a workout, I can still remember there was like a rowing and front squat workout. And it was like the rep scheme was like 30, 20, 10 of front squats at 135. And for me, like that was incredibly heavy. Never have front squatted before. And I remember going like, still heavy for you. Right. I ain't joking. It is <laughs> going to the coach and being like, man, I don't know if I can do this at 135. That's going to be hard. And he goes, he looks at me and goes, I'm not going to write RX on your, on the board next to your name if you don't. And I was like, 135 it is. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Can we take a guess Load at who up. that was? Was it, was that, were his initials <laughs> AH? <laughs> I think he would give you the same advice today. <laughs> not, not everyone has changed over the years. All right, let, let's look at one more hey, workout. Got, oh, yeah, God. go down to the 24th. That one That's what is I was look at, yeah. spicy. Spicy and a really good one to kind of have to do some yeah. figuring out here. We could probably talk. Both of, those could go, both of those could go sideways real quick if you don't do this right. So if you're listening, we're on July 24th of 2020. Unfortunately, Todd, you are not... I don't know. That could be him back there behind that person. No, that guy's Let's assume. biceps look too big. <laughs> Let's assume that it is Todd. Let's assume that it is Todd. All right. Um, so the workout of the day, complete as many rounds as possible in 15 minutes of 12 muscle ups, 36 kettlebell swings, two pood for the men. So 70 pounds for the men, one and a half for the oh. women. So 53 for the women. That's 36 brutal. 70 pound swings is no joke. That's, this, a, this, that's it, 15, or 12 and 36? That's the whole workout for 15 minutes? Do you, grip, do you guys know who's programming grip, these days? Oh, shit. I don't know. Somebody who's demonic. Um, that is a grip smasher. And just a – it's a – yeah. I mean, you're, we could talk about it, but I don't think you're hanging on for 36 swings anyway. But if you are, you're not grabbing maybe those for, for a maybe for one round. And this is one of those ones where I briefly like, listen, just because you can swing 36 doesn't mean that you should. <laughs> okay, Todd's already wrote something. Four to there six. Was, there was an old CrossFit football workout. I believe it was. Uh, there was a sprint in there, and then it ended with 30 swings at 70. And I went on broken one time. This was probably eight to ten years ago. I don't think I could do that again. 30, and I remember like I was like, wow, that was. I'm a badass doing 30 swings at 70. Now I can barely do 30 swings with Roz's little pink kettlebell. So you said four dude, to six, Todd. I would actually go three to five. Let me think about this. I just think I think people are just gonna get demolished. I agree um, with you, but I, I think the first round can be quick enough to where you'll have some, you'll have enough time in the tank to get to like to be able to get three additional rounds. Cause you think about the first round, if like your top, top that's what I was going to ask you. What do you think? What do you think? What think do you think to somebody who's I've, pretty good at both of those movements? Three yeah, minutes so I, I for the first so, round. That's kind of, that's where I was at three to four, right? I was going to say um, three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in there in the first round. And so then you look at, all right, 12 minutes for three more rounds. Um, <sighs> it's tight. It's tight, but that's like, <laughs> 
same deal. I think that's, that's where you could get that because so in that, so end, in that, so let's talk about that, that uh, three and a half to four minutes, whatever it is. What does that look like for somebody who's pretty good? I'm not talking about a games athlete who's going to do multiple rounds of 12 muscle ups. I'm talking for like the average person who's not doing 12 muscle ups unbroken. Six. What has muscle up is pretty, pre, is pretty proficient. That's six, well, rest, you, six, something like nah, that. I think it's three sets of four. That's four what I think too. Cause, yeah, cause that's he, here's, and the other I got to play the long I'm, game here. The other reason I'm at four to six rounds is because the reality of it is, is like the only person doing this as prescribed is somebody really, really, really good. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a workout at my gym. I don't know that a single person does it as prescribed. Well, I think, I, so I think there's a difference between somebody who's really, really fit and then somebody who's proficient with the movements, right? Like I would, so like, I, I would put all the three of us in that category. Like I know both of you are proficient with both movements. Jay, uh, nope, like realistically, Jay can't do muscle ups. Jay <laughs> yeah. cannot do. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Also, also, that's probably really, really heavy because that's I don't know, was it eighty percent of your body weight, Jay? That's half my body weight. Pounds. Yeah, yeah. So that that's really heavy. So. I don't even like for that scenario. I'm like, is, is two is 70 pounds even appropriate for somebody who's 140? Probably not. Well, and that's, and that's exactly where I'm at is like, I look at that and I'm like, could I do this as prescribed? Absolutely. Would I get four plus rounds? Probably not. So does that like, so I think I'm a good example of the fact that I think for your, the person that this is intended to on crossfit.com is getting four rounds. Right. The person that's going to be challenged on that, that's doing it on CrossFit.com. And so in my head, I'm like, dude, I got to get four rounds because these aren't five minute rounds. You know what I'm saying? There's just not enough reps of this stuff for this to be. I a think that last one round. might be because of the, the I see the muscle ups falling apart for most people. I mean, if you're getting four rounds of this, that's almost 50 muscle ups, dude. Right. But think about who it's for and what's the stimulus. Like if you ask the person who programmed it on CrossFit.com. It's, I, I just think it's a, you know, four I plus think, rounds. I think, I think there's a lot of people who are like really fit for everyday life. I'm not talking about like games or regionals who are really fit. Just like walk in any gym and be like, oh, dude's fit. Like pretty proficient who are going to get three and a half rounds of this. But I think four is going to get, going to get real yucky. I mean, Which that is, is just, that is just big, so much grip, dude. So I mean, much pull. Dude, I could, I, I agree. And I think that's why it's, I, this is a great workout to program at your gym because like I said, at my gym, even though I'm pretty good at muscle ups and kettlebell swings or just kettlebell swings, right? I'm not doing that RX. Like I'm just not doing it because I know that even three rounds prescribed for me is not what everybody else in my gym is going to feel like. So it's like, in my opinion, I'm not going to do it RX just because I can check the box and say that I can, I want it to be what, what everybody else is going to get, which I think is a little bit more. So how many, so four rounds at 30, how many kettlebell swings is that? One, almost 150. Devastating. 144. 144. Yeah, that is. So we just did an eight on, on. That's Saturday. exactly what I was just going to compare this yeah. to, right? The Saturday. total volume of reps is similar, right? I mean, so what did I do? I did uh, 16 rounds. What's that? Fern likes to humble brag there, Todd. You see that? No, that's oh, you, yeah. bro. No, no, no. I emommed it. So yeah, uh, how many? I was gonna do twenty-one rounds too. So I emommed it, you know. No, I so I actually I tell you what I did do. I did um, I I was like I did the first round. Long story short, I couldn't do the warm up, so I literally walked out there, grabbed a kettlebell, and they're like three, two, one, go. So I did the first round. And I was like, boom! I was like done like forty four seconds, and I was like, I'm gonna wait thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna go bad. So fast. yeah. So now here's now here's what happened. I ended up holding almost that exact pace the entire time. So I ended up on a seventy five second clock and ended up with uh, sixteen rounds. That's a good idea for a workout like Nate, oh. though. That, that's a good idea. So the, but going back to this workout, this is a workout that really will separate the games athletes versus the best at your box. Cause the best at your box kind of like you guys are saying are going to fall off where the games. Oh, athletes yeah. This, will, this turns into a soup sandwich in round two. When people start, yeah. it, when people start creeping up towards 20 muscle ups, this is like in the day one workout at the, at seminars when somebody goes balls out on round one and then goes to pick up the bar for round two. And they they look at us like, 
what is happening. They got, they got, egged, on by, they got, egged, they got <laughs> egged on by James Hobart, who was just like, listen, whoever wins round one generally wins, you know? So, so <laughs> let, let's, I, I think we've nailed it, but let's talk scaling on this. What would be some options? I can tell you, I might, I think a fair option would be something like seven muscle ups and then the 36 swings at, at basically drop the load, you know, 55 for men, 35 for women. What do you guys think about that? So, so, so I would say so, it differently, but yeah, go ahead, Todd. I was going to say, so I look at even, even the person who I think is really good at this, that I'm, that I'm saying can get four rounds. I think they're still doing it in three sets of four reps for the muscle ups and they're doing it in three sets of 12 for the kettlebell swings. That's what I was thinking too. And, and so that's where I'm headed with my scaling. So if I've got somebody that has muscle ups, maybe it's three sets of three gets them to nine around or three sets of two gets them to six around, or three sets of one gets them to three around exactly. of the muscle ups, whatever that is. That's exactly. What and then my do. kettlebell swings are the same thing. It's like just scale hey, the load, scale the yep. load, range of motion to do three sets of twelve. Yep, three sets of twelve, and so it's probably for most people, it's in that like three to nine muscle up range per round, and it's probably like for guys like the fifty-five or fifty-three kettlebell would be my the way I scale it for most people. That's, that's exactly how I would, um, I wouldn't change anything about that. So let's take that one step further. If you have members that are like, I don't know, I have muscle ups and I can swing this. What are some maybe like quick tests or quick questions you may ask them to help decipher that? For me, this would be done in the warm up. So I'm going to, I'm going to get through the kettlebell swing portion of this as fast as possible in order to spend I mean so this is a 15 minute workout uh let's say we have seven minutes on the back end that's 22 minutes uh 25 so let's say 35 minutes to get through uh I want to spend probably no less than 10 to 12 minutes on the muscle up alone taking people through progressions to see can they get a muscle up is it is it should they be doing a bar muscle up instead just because they can do that? And the one to work on the transition portion of it, like how, like what variation of the ring transition do they need to do? Um, but because there's only two movements, the kettlebell swing, again, we could, we know it's not a simple movement, but it's not near at the level of complexity that the muscle up is. So it's just like, Hey, scale the load. If you need to make this a Russian kettlebell swing instead of American, do that just to make it simple so I can spend all of my time making sure that we're warmed up for the muscle up and I've gotten everybody to a spot that's going to be challenging for them. Um, and I'd probably start everybody at the low rings, like working on ring rows, inverted ring rows, seated transitions, um, all that stuff. And by the time they get ready to go, like they're going. When would you say that someone is better off going bar versus ring? The, um, I don't know that there's a, that's a, I couldn't give you a, a scenario like this is it. It's usually like there's an athlete in the gym who's kind of like has good capacity, struggles a little bit with the technique, but like they can do the bar muscle up version of it. And it would never be an all the time thing. It's kind of like, where are they at today? What's the workout? What's the stimulus? Do, do they, where are they at? You know, like mentally, do they come in and they, re- they want to hit it? I'm like, get on the bar, man. I'm like, I don't like, it's fine. Okay. Um, you know. All right. Well, I think, those are some, those are three good workouts and that's kind of an insight into what three different coaches do, but it all, all in all three scenarios with all three coaches, we kind of got to the same place with them. Any, yeah, which any I think other? you should, which I think realistically, I think most people who have been doing this a while would probably come up with a very similar um, answers to that. Just different means yeah. of getting there slightly, slightly tweaked. Yep. All right. Time domains. Anything to add, Todd? No, man. I think this is a, I think this is a big part of coaching. I think it's kind of a fun game to play as well. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I still use this process all the time now, but I will tell you that I get it wrong quite a bit um, or, or at least to some degree. So don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to try something and be like, Ooh, man, I looked at that and the, the time was way longer than I expected. What was it? We had a, we had a hero workout. Let me look. Well, on that note, like the, the, w- the way you get around that as a new coach is you make the windows bigger. So you don't make three minute windows because you're likely to be wrong. So you make four minute window, five minute window, maybe even a six minute window. Cause I don't think six and depending on the workout, a 10 minute window isn't out of the question. Yeah. I'm like a Murph. 
yeah a longer exactly workout, that's not right? that's not that's not unreasonable you know as the time domain goes out farther to the right the window for finishing should be larger and if you here's the other deal is if your main focus of the class is one workout and then prepping people for that workout you got so much more time even if you mess up the time domain you know what i mean like even if you're off a little bit well if you factored in a cool down and you haven't spent too much time doing extra stuff before you get to the workout anyways, then you have time. Here's the one that took a lot longer than I expected. So I'll ask you guys. So it's the, the hero workout help three rounds, 800 meter run, 30, 30 dumbbell squat cleans at 50 pounds and 30 burpees. Where are you at with that? 830 and 30. Yep. So For three rounds, was it? Three rounds. I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm going to go average of four minutes. So just 12 right off the bat for the run. Yep. For the yeah, runs. the run's the easy one. 30 burpees. We'll go 90 Two. seconds. 90. So we'll go four and a half for the burpees total. So we're at okay. 16 and a half. And then what was the other one? 30 dumbbell squat cleans. What's the weight? 50. That's nasty. That's, that's gross. So then another... Now I don't think it's unreasonable to go 90 seconds per. So you're pro I would say I would say 20 to 25 minutes is what I would. That's suggest. I think most people will break those up. Even the best are going to need I would do three sets those. of 10. Yeah, I'm not yeah. doing fucking yeah. So that was pretty much where my head was at. Yeah, I think there your burpees were a little south. fast. I think people are recovering on the, the burpees. Well, most notably after 30 squat like the squat cleans with 15 pound dumbbells way more devastating than you think 50 yeah 50 yeah and yeah with the 50 pound dumbbells oh and by the way we're in florida and it was like a, a million freaking degrees. million degrees there wasn't like this was we had one guy do it rx one guy at the whole gym 34 minutes and he's like he's a good runner masters probably, masters masters athlete but makes the makes the qualifier online qualifier or whatever so like that game. okay so if you switched so it what minutes. was off so you go so was he taking like two to three minutes for each of the burpees th let's call it that that's three minutes for each of almost everything actually yeah so th the, the, the squat cleans that you think are in sets of 10 are in sets of like five or six and the burpees are way slower than you think just like in so this you're doing was 12 like, minute rounds yeah well Four, 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 rounds. basically. Yeah. I I mean, like, what what was the name of that hero workout? Hilton. I think I've done that, yeah. Or Helton, excuse me, Helton. It reminds me, me, there's one called Badger, which is similar to, which is... Yeah, yeah. squat cleans yeah. with a barbell, though, right? And pull-ups. Much with, easier. And pull-ups are faster. You don't realize just, and, and by the way, like, you think of, we've done workouts with, like, hang squat cleans with dumbbells, which become a lot easier. Touching the ground. And getting that deal. thing to your shoulder, it was devastating. So no, that all I'm doing is making an example of like I was like 20, 25 minutes probably. Then I saw that I looked at the scores when I woke up in the morning morning class. One of our top athletes posted a score of let me see what it was of 3554, and he did the first round at 50 pounds. He did the second round, first 10 reps at 40 pounds, then moved to 20 pounds and finished the last round with air squats and still finished in 35 minutes. Todd, do you, Todd's progressive <laughs> scaling. Yeah, progressive like, scaling. You, did you talk to him afterwards? Like, do you, did you see? Yes. Now, so now here's the deal. So worth, again, this is actually a good discussion point. How hot was it? Well, he did it at 545 in the morning. Yeah, but, but still, like, like, dude, it's, here it's, it's, it's fucking it's 90 a, degrees at 5 a.m. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, a, it's 100 degrees. It was a hot day. I'll tell you. Here's what I'll give you mine. I did so it that matters, right? And that's and you should tell people that. Like you should that matters. Like because if that's seventy degrees outside, I bet he is closer to twenty five minutes. Yeah, but you like, don't live in Florida and not know. Potentially, that we don't like we we communicate that, and that's it's well known. When you walk into the gym and you're sweating just getting out of your car, that's known. But wait, so what did you do, Todd? What you we can hear you. What, I did it. I did it at thirty pound dumbbells, and I did it in thirty two forty five, and wanted to die. It also becomes one of those workouts, like it's, it's not easier with 30s, but you can force yourself to hang on to those dumbbells, which well, get you, which are I was able to, painful. Here's what I'll tell you. But then your runs are five minutes for a half month. Oh, they yeah, were five true. minutes. I, was, <laughs> I, I, did, I stuck with the sets of 10 on the dumbbells. I took a knee in between sets of almost everything that I did. I'll put oh it that God, way. Oh, my God, dude. It was an ugly day. It was bad. But, and going back to what Fern said earlier, the longer the workout, 
I mean, at some point, your percentage of being off, I mean, granted, that was like 50%. So that was big. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. you know, like if you're five minutes off an hour workout, it's the same percentage as being a minute off a 10 minute workout, you know? So you were a little bit further off on that one. But yeah, it's like anything. And if you're programming a workout like that, typically if you're doing it in a class time, you're doing a really quick general warm up, really quick specific warm up, yeah. and then you're going. So you have that buffer time built in. Yeah, and it, it didn't end up being an issue with any of our classes, but it was just a good example of like, listen, I still get it wrong, man. So you, you, ultimately, you still need to do the workouts. You need to have some flexibility and understand that like as, as much as you think you got to figure it out, sometimes things outside of your control, just the way that movements play off of each other or the weather outside or what you've done the day before is going to make an impact on things. Well, and this is why people get this wrong because in a lesson plan scenario, because they don't schedule time for a cool down. Yeah, especially after doing that workout in if Florida. I start this at 35. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you need to, you need to schedule 10 minutes on the back end of that. Like, to, to just let people get oh, their man. life together. It was, it was brutal. Well, good episode. Two things for Thursday's episode. One, Todd, you're going to fix your website. <laughs> I didn't need to look at that. I did look something. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. I'll, show, I'll send you mine later, Todd. Perfect. Fern, will, Fern, Fern will do that. And then Fern, you're going to hit the seven-minute AMRAP, right? Yes. Yes. For Thursday? You need it done for Thursday? Yeah. yeah we got to talk about it for Thursday, it. yeah. Yeah, that'll be my. Uh, that'll keep on track. That will be my workout for the week. Your one workout a week. Perfect. Yeah. Your one workout. Perfect. Todd, what do you think he's gonna get? What did I say? Where was I? Go back. Well, to Fern you? said he can get. Five. I said he's get five. He said five and a half, dude. I think he's. I think he's in the fours. I think he finishes his fourth round, but doesn't finish five. So four yeah. and a half. So I'm you're saying the, four you're, plus the dumbbell push press. Four plus I'm, something. I just think I'm in the I'm in the four plus range. I too. think that fifth round, like finishing that fifth round, is a you. I agree. All three of us could make it through four casually, like deep breaths. You yeah, know, yeah I think four not reps. moving super, not right. getting ridiculous is very doable. But then you try to that fifth round. I mean, you're trying to cram in twenty five percent more work in that time frame, and that adds up. Dude, those, what's the, those what's 50 the pound man? dumbbells, dude. That's, yeah. Your, your one week off arm, you're going to be doing this. This one's going to be and, over and here. I mean, just we're, not there to, we're not there to judge you, but we assume you're not going to do push jerks. Those yeah. are harder. No, I, I would immediately respond. Listen, to I've jerks seen your overhead head. position. Jerks are definitely harder for you. No, I, I don't. My shoulders would blow up on those. I'm not. I, no, I think heavy. dumbbell push jerks are so much more difficult than a push press i don't think i think it's gonna hard work out no matter what <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll ask, oh we'll in ask no Catherine way shape or form it. am i assuming like just seven minutes gives me anxiety just be like oh, oh seven minutes like how bad could it be and i'm like yeah fuck you i know exactly how bad i could be i'll hit my peloton workout and report back we good guys yeah, perfect We're good good episode i hope people learned a little bit about how we, we think about time domains and set the workout for the whiteboard brief. That's it. Thanks for listening to best hour of their day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. So it becomes super simple some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcasts. That's right, on Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite artists, but also podcasts in one place for free. 
Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify or browse some other podcasts. If you want, you can find them in your library tab and also make sure to follow me. So you never miss an episode of best hour of their day. Thanks again for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. If you haven't already, do us a favor, head over to the Apple Podcast app and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback for either Fern or myself. Hit us up, besthouroftheirday at gmail.com or send us a DM over on Instagram at besthouroftheirday. Once again, we couldn't do this without the amazing community and you are a part of it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting. Best hour of their day.